Hi, I'm Devin. And I'm Billford, and we're from Team Cockamamie at the University of South Carolina. So our philosophy with this robot was uh, when we first looked at the game, you know, we saw there, you know, there were a lot of opportunities to score cubes. And that's cool, and uh, really we probably should have gone that route because a lot of teams are going to learn for that. But then as we kind of looked at the scoring opportunities for climbing at the end of the game, we realized, you know, there's nothing really stopping one robot from trying to lift two other robots. So we decided it was kind of one of those, would we want to risk the, our season on that on our own teams? No, but we're robot in three days, so we decided... Since we're not actually competing, even if this isn't the best way to go for it, we might as well try to lift two other robots for the memes anyways. The bulk of the structure of the wings that deploys is made out of Andy Mark's uh, peanut extrusion and the brand new walnut extrusion. Uh, these two bolt together using quarter 20 thread forming screws, which uh, you can also use just with a uh, tap. We use a drill tap on a lot of these uh, the holes that allow us to sink screws into the uh, to the ribs of the peanut and the walnut. The structure is extra strong and it was able to uh, hold more than 150 pounds, which is more than you'll see uh, on a competition robot. Uh, we also use it for the selfie stick that's allowing us to record these videos. One of the concerns we had about lifting other robots was ensuring that they would stay in place on the wings as, they went, as the robots went up, especially if there was weight imbalance where one robot was significantly heavier or off-center compared to the other one. So we added these cleats here using uh, self-drilling screws that we sunk into the Andy Mark walnut extrusion. That provides a simple cleat that can catch a frame member or a bumper, uh, maybe a little rough on it, but it'll ensure that the robot doesn't fall off. Our winch is powered by a sim motor using Andy Mark's new SimSport gearbox uh, with an additional 15 to 60 tooth uh, sprocket run. We designed the winch to be able to do about 500 pounds, which is about 50 pounds heavier than we should ever realistically see on the competition field. The winch uses uh, two 400 pound test ropes, uh, which are actually climbing ropes that we're using, and uh, we loop, loop them around a hex shaft and tie them off to Andy Mark black uh, four inch compliant wheels, which is definitely a not uh, recommended use for them, uh, but it got us through the uh, three day build, so we can't knock it too much. The forks are mounted by uh, two gate hinges each onto a quarter inch plate of aluminum on top of two two by one by eighth inch aluminum stock pieces on top of our stock Andy Mark chassis. Um, as you can see, we use only four wheels instead of six as normal configuration. Initially, we decided to do that because we were concerned about the forks interfering with the ability of a wheel to exist there, but that proved not to be an issue, but we did go back and reinstall one. In our lift videos, you may notice the arms droop a bit. That's because what stops the arms from going down is when this piece hits the side of the chassis, and since there's a little too much clearance there when it's level, that's why they hang down a little bit. The arms really don't flex too much, at least not that we've seen so far, so it does seem much more stable than it may at first appear. The forks are held up initially by a rubber band that is tied to one of them. So um, at the beginning of the match, when we, well, at the end of the match, when we deploy our arm, it will tear this rubber band in half, the two forks will drop down, other robots can mount the forks, and then we can climb the tower to score 90 points. Our arm here is made out of carbon fiber and definitely not plywood. We have a Andy Mark hex hub mounted into it with wood screws, and then um, that is connected to a new Andy Mark redline motor with a 100 to 1 versaplanetary reduction. Um, that's honestly probably still too fast for this application. It's very fast and there's no stopping it, so we have to be very careful when we move that up or down. Our claw down here is made out of two um, hooks made out of quarter inch aluminum plate, and then that, those two um, hooks are connected by um, peanut protrusion, and that is connected to another piece of peanut via some uh, hook and loop fasteners. So what everyone's wondering right now is what about bumpers? Well, we designed the forks so that we can actually clear within legal bumpers if they're basically confined to the corners of the robot. However, we did not actually build any and we did not test climbing with the bumpers. So some modifications to the design may or may not be required to actually make that happen. And on top of that, we're just gonna generally say, don't build this robot. Uh, we, we, the most obvious thing that we left out of this robot was any ability to manipulate power cubes. Yeah. I'm a little more enthusiastic about the idea than Billford is here, but um, 
we did leave enough space on the robot, um, not by design, but just kind of incidentally, that we could potentially install a power cube handling device if we had more time to do so. So if a little more time went into the design, say more than three days perhaps, then it could be possible to do some to do this and handle power cubes in a competition. Other things that we are worried about, uh, a lot of us are worried about how this winch is mounted to the am one for u 3 frame. We chose to put uh, some angle brackets in some places that allowed us to only attach it at the outside plates. Uh, if you're designing a winch, you definitely want to put something beefier on there than what we did. Yeah, our winch in general, if yours looks like ours, you might want to rebuild it. We're basically using nothing that we should be using, and we don't want to run it more than we have to. Well, we, they, they probably should be using a Sim Sport and a James oh, okay, Sprocket. Okay. We'll, we'll give them that. that. Okay. This robot is held together by a lot of uh, gut decisions and a lot of memes. Uh, we really do not recommend building a robot like this, although hopefully you can learn from what we did in three days to make your build go well in six weeks so that you can build a more effective robot and play the first power-up challenge more effectively.